Hey everybody, it is August 7th, 2024, and we're gonna be doing a complete walk to New York City's Upper West Side of Manhattan. We're starting off on Fifth Avenue, right outside of the flagship Apple Store, and the GM Building. Now, looking down Fifth Avenue, you can notice it's rush hour. It's about 6.15 p.m. Eastern Time. And if we point the camera a little bit further to the north, you're gonna see 53 West 53rd Street, as well as the Crown Building, which doubles as the Amman New York Hotel and Residences right here in New York City. So let's go ahead and get this walk started. We're gonna be doing a complete walk to the Upper West Side of Manhattan, walking down Central Park South. the Sherry Netherland Hotel, just off to our right. This is Grand Army Plaza. Now the second part of Grand Army Plaza, that's right outside the Plaza Hotel, they're gonna be doing a complete and total renovation. As you can see, it's all boarded off. And it's gonna be all brand new and gorgeous right outside of the Plaza. It should be finished in the winter of 2024. The main entrance to the residences at the plaza sits on Central Park South. <clears throat> so a lot of people don't know that. If you own a condo or an apartment at the plaza, your address is 1 Central Park South. But if you're going to be staying at the hotel, the entrance faces towards Fifth Avenue and Grand Army Plaza. You also have beautiful views of 432 Park Avenue as well as the GM building. 
Now, as we head closer towards the Upper West Side, we're going to be talking about an exciting new development that's popped up by Extel. Immediately. Across the street is a really nice hotel. It's called the Park Lane Hotel. So if you're looking to stay right on Central Park, but you don't want to pay the amount of money that it would cost to stay at the Plaza or the Ritz Carlton or even the JW Marriott Essex House. Go ahead and check out the Park Lane. And as a quick reminder, this was recently renovated after the COVID-19 pandemic. They closed it down and they did a complete gut renovation on the hotel. So you have the prime location like you have at the Plaza, the Ritz-Carlton, and JW Marriott with about, I would say, 30% discount. And you're right on Central Park. We're now approaching 6th Avenue, or as they call it, Avenue of the Americas. And you can see a view of Central Park Tower, as well as 157. Now remember, 157 West 57th Street was the first building ever constructed on New York City's Billionaire's Row. The developer is Extel. They're the developer that's also responsible for Central Park Tower at 217 West 57th Street, as well as 1 Manhattan Square, which is in Lower Manhattan. Across the street is the main entrance to the Ritz-Carlton, New York. This is the Hotel and Residences, 50 Central Park South. Now the big building just off to the right, that is the skinniest residential apartment building in the entire world. That is the Steinway Tower, 111 West 57th Street. But this is one of my favorite entrances to the park, 6th Avenue. You have all the horse and carriage rides, lots of tourists. You can see that glass building just off to your left. That is the brand new 50 West 60th Street, the new Extel development. And this is a shot looking down 6th Avenue past Radio City Music Hall, as well as Rockefeller Center. And the building just to the top left-hand corner of your screen is another Billionaire's Row building. 53 West 53rd Street.
And by watching the video, you would think it's a day in mid-fall, maybe in October, but it's not. It's very, very early August, but it's not even 70 degrees out today. Just across the street to our left is yet another hotel on Central Park South. It is the JW Marriott Essex House. <clears throat> this is a really, really nice five-star hotel. Again, it's a bit pricey, but I would highly recommend it. Also, just a quick note, if you haven't been to the Essex House in quite some time, it's gonna look new to you because they just went through a complete renovation on the lobby. And this portion, the left-hand side of the hotel, is no longer that restaurant. It is a brand new restaurant called Bourbon Steak, and it's fantastic. So if you're visiting New York City, and let's say you're not even staying at the Essex House, if you're looking for a good steakhouse, it's a little pricey, but check out Bourbon Steak in the lobby of the JW Marriott Essex House. It's unbelievable. Just the decor, the ambiance. It's a really, really nice hotel, and I think you'd enjoy it. So mark that down at the JW Marriott Essex House. Bourbon steak. Very good. One eighty Central Park South. This is another famous building here. This is the New York Athletic Club, or the NYAC. Now, I'll give you a quick tip: if there's any bird watchers or <clears throat> big environmental enthusiasts, if you come here in early summer, particularly early July, there's usually families of hawks that perch on top of those little balconies at the New York Athletic Club and you could watch them dive bomb at squirrels and things like that. It's very, very cool. But this is just a beautiful building. The architecture is superb. It's a very, very nice club. 180 Central Park South, the New York Athletic Club. Now, this building I also like, which is right across the street. This is 200 Central Park South. This is what you would call a co-op building or a cooperative. And I really like it because almost every single unit has these beautiful curved balconies that overlook Central Park. Now they are going under some capital improvement projects on the main valet, but that is a nice building. It's a co-op, 200 Central Park South. And this is the main parade route, by the way, for Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. So if you have a unit at 200 Central Park South, you can quite literally just pull up the chair on your balcony 
and watch the parade go by. Now the two tall buildings in the center of the screen, the glass one is Central Park Tower by Extel, but the brick and mortar one to the right is 220 Central Park South that was constructed by Vernado, some of the most expensive real estate in the entire world is right here. Those two glass towers in the distance, those are the Deutsche Bank Towers, or the Deutsche Bank Center. Deutsche Bank is a bold bracket German investment bank that moved their New York City headquarters from 60 Wall Street to Columbus Circle. In the North Tower, you have the Mandarin Oriental Hotel. And in the South Tower, you have luxury condos. Here's the Central Park South entrance to 220 Central Park South. Beautiful building, great architecture. Now the only criticism I've gotten from clients on this building is that the windows are a little bit too small. But this is a good alternative to Central Park Tower or 157. If you want to live in a building similar to 15 Central Park West, which was the limestone building that was completed in 2008 during the financial crisis and went on to be one of New York City's most prestigious buildings and best selling buildings, which we're gonna pass as we make a right on Columbus Circle and head into the Upper West Side of Manhattan. Okay, we've officially made it to the end of Central Park on the south side. And we're gonna be making a right This black glass building that you see right here is One Central Park West. That is the Trump International Hotel and Tower. And there's three main entrances. Number one is the entrance to the Michelin Star Restaurant, Jean George. The middle entrance is to the hotel. And the third entrance is to the condominiums.
Okay, let's make a right on Central Park West. And here you can see the main entrance to one Central Park West. So as you can see here, door number one is to Jean George. Door number two in the middle is the hotel. And door number three on the right is the residences. Here we are on the corner of West 61st Street and Central Park West. We are looking at one of the most luxurious and sought after apartment buildings in New York City. This is 15 Central Park West, also nicknamed the Limestone Building. I'd recommend buying a unit that sits just on top of the tree line of Central Park in the northmost facing tower. It kind of feels like you're floating right over Central Park. And here's the main valet. At 15 Central Park West. Okay, we're now on Broadway 
and we are going to make a right and head uptown past Lincoln Center. You're going to notice as we head further into the Upper West Side, a lot of the buildings are going to change from these super tall skyscrapers to more quaint pre-war and even brownstone slash railroad style, which is quite nice. It definitely feels more residential. This is now Sesame Street or West 63rd Street, the Lincoln Center neighborhood. You have lots of restaurants, you have the Smith right here, great outdoor dining. So if you want to catch a show and dinner, you have tons of options to grab a bite to eat and then head over to Lincoln Center.
I now want to take you over to Lincoln Center because this is the summer and they have a ton of activities for free. And I believe they even have a silent disco going on. Here you have the one train station at 66th Street. Lincoln Center Station. the brand new Xtel building. I believe it's 50 West 66th Street.
We're now coming up on West 67th Street and Broadway. And a few blocks will cross back over to Columbus Avenue. You can see some of the beauty of the architecture here. You have these beautiful pre-war buildings with those fire escapes. Lots of brick and mortar. It really gives it a neighborhood feel and a charm. We're coming up to the 72nd Street subway station. You can get the one, two, and three trains. Now the two and three trains are express. So this would go express from 72nd Street to Times Square, 42nd Street, if you get the two or the three.
This is overlooking New Jersey towards the Hudson River. And you can kind of see the juxtaposition from the pre-war buildings to the newer buildings that are being built. This is one of the main Trader Joe's to the left. <clears throat> right on 72nd Street, outside of the 1, 2, and 3 train terminal. You also have Beacon Theater up here. Okay, we're on 72nd Street and we're gonna be making a right. And we're gonna be walking past Columbus Avenue all the way over to Central Park West and checking out the Dakota, or the very famous Dakota building where John Lennon once lived and where he was killed, as well as Strawberry Fields. See, there's tons of shops here on 72nd. And 
some very beautiful looking buildings too. There's also a lot of good coffee shops on the Upper West Side. If we were to make a left on Columbus, in between 72nd and 73rd, there's a really good coffee shop called Black Press Coffee. It is fantastic. This is Columbus Avenue. Look at how beautiful the buildings look. You could even see 220 Central Park South and Central Park Tower. As well as 50 West 66th Street. So that huge, I mean it almost sticks out like a sore thumb. That huge glass building is a new luxury condo by Extel. 50 West 66th. We'll quickly make a right. Are you done? Did you go to the same place? Right on the corner here, West 73rd. I think it's 274 Columbus. <clears throat> this is Black Press Coffee.
This is one of the best coffee shops on the Upper West Side by far. And it's only a block away from Central Park. So if it's a nice day out, you can grab a cold brew espresso, something like that, and head back over towards Central Park. You'll be able to see a lot of these beautiful homes. It's really, really nice. They also have these beautiful trees that provide a really nice canopy. So this is the back side of the Dakota building. And once we get to Central Park West, you're gonna be able to see a full view of the facade. And some of these buildings have the original gas lanterns. You're gonna see two of them, obviously one being the Dakota, but there's also one coming up just to our left. But look at how nice the entranceways are. You can see they even have their windows open.
And here we are at Central Park West. Here's the Dakota. And as always, you can see the Billionaire's Row buildings in the distance, which is very, very unique. I always like to look at these beautiful wooden shutters in the apartments of the Dakota. It's just such an amazing, amazing building. In between 72nd and 73rd and Central Park West. If you were to make a left, 72nd and Central Park West is Strawberry Fields, which is a beautiful place. But this is the main entrance. See the beautiful architecture leading into the inside. Just look at the detail on the railings too. I always like this shot 
because in between the trees, you could see, if I turn the brightness down, you could see 432 Park Avenue. But if you guys enjoyed that walking tour of New York City's Upper West Side from Central Park South, feel free to leave a like on the video and subscribe for more walking tours of New York City. And if you're looking to buy an apartment in New York and you need some help, feel free to reach out to me at the email address below and I'd be more than happy to help you and your family find the perfect place right here in New York City. Thanks so much for watching.